Hey, friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. You know, today is day 27 in our 30-day series. We are so close to being done. And since I've never covered this topic in the last three years of the website or channel, it seems like today would be a good day to dig into smart controls. To be honest, I never really cared about smart controls. I never really saw the value. But then when I started to dig into keyboard controllers and Logic Remote on the iPad, that's when I realized, okay, there's something kind of awesome here. In a nutshell, smart controls kind of compiles all the important controls of your instruments, of your plugins, of your patches into one handy interface. So instead of you having to constantly open plugins and instruments to access those controls, you can just have one simple window that's immediately accessible and has just the important bits that you need. And you can see right from the smart controls on screen here, we can access things like compression, EQ, echo, the different send levels. Really, it's an entire patch worth of controls. And let's just pop open some of these plugins so we can see what's going on. We open the compressor. If we adjust this dial here, we're adjusting both the threshold and the makeup gain for the compressor, which is pretty cool. If we open the EQ, we can adjust the low band, booster cut, the mid band, just the frequency. We can turn the EQ off or on. We open the second channel EQ. We can boost the high end. Additionally, we can turn on the echo, which turns on both tape delay and stereo delay on this channel strip. And we can boost the echo for both. Or we can even boost the send level as well for either reverb send. And to access smart controls, use either key command B or go up to this button that looks like a knob on a controller and just pop it open. Now, the biggest value of smart controls is that you can actually customize your own smart controls for your patches and channel strip settings. But before we dig into that, I just wanna show you the different views and the different controls that you can have access to because really there's a lot available to you. If we go up to this piano patch, we again have access to things like EQ. So you can see in the EQ thumbnail that I'm boosting the high end or low end compression once again, and we have different effects. If we go to this organ patch, we not only have knobs for controls, but we also have the draw bars of the organ, or we can adjust the speed of the cabinet. We have different switches, as you would expect on an organ, different controls. If we open this drum machine patch, we have ultra beat, and we can adjust the different levels of the different elements like kick or snare. We can even load up one of the sequences right from here, so we can have one of them play. which is pretty cool. For alchemy patches, we get the XY pad so we can flip through the different variations of a patch. Go to the controls, we have a whole other page of controls. For the electric piano, the face updates to look like an electric piano. And for the guitar patch, we can access everything from the amp to the pedals and the reverb on the amp. It's just really amazing. And there's way more beyond this. I mean, if you look at the right-hand corner here, we have a couple different options. So depending on the channel strip, you get different controls. In this case, we can open the tuner or pedal board or amp designer itself. And for software instrument tracks, we can even load up an arpeggiator and flip through the different presets of the arpeggiator, which is pretty cool. Or if we open a brand new channel strip, we can load up the channel EQ in one shot just by pressing on this EQ tab. Beautiful, so now it's loaded and we can go ahead and start EQing. And let's go back to our vocal patch here. If we go right here, we can actually select from the dropdown different sends or even the master output. So by selecting our ambience send, we can open the corresponding auxiliary channel strips smart controls. And if we dig in here to the master output, I've loaded a preset and we have everything from enveloper to EQ, exciter, limiter. I mean, really, there's so much going on here. And I bet you can immediately imagine how you could optimize the smart controls for your own save channel strips. So let's go ahead and start to create our own smart control interface. We'll go back to the track here and we'll set this back to controls. And now we're gonna open the inspector. Things have updated. We have an inspector on the left. We also have this knob that's not quite there. It says unmapped, but it's got a halo of blue around it. And this is letting us know that we can have additional controls that we can map to different parameters. Now let's just clear the deck for this particular smart controls, go to the gear here, the settings, and delete all patch mappings. All right, so now we're starting from square one 
and you can have up to 12 different smart controls within a smart control window for each patch or channel strip setting. And if you select different knobs, this is how we determine which control we're going to map a parameter to. Now we just need to map a parameter. So let's open the compressor and we're gonna select this learn button here and we're gonna click on the threshold of the compressor. Beautiful, so now we have the compressor threshold mapped to this smart control. Awesome, but maybe you wanna map more than one parameter to a single smart control, no problem. In this case, we're gonna go back to those settings and go back down to add mapping. We're gonna learn again, but we wanna make sure to select our new unmapped option here. Click on learn, go to make up gain and click on it. Beautiful, so now we have compressor threshold and gain to one smart control. Perfect. Now you can also invert these selections. So maybe I want the compressor gain to be opposite that of the compressor threshold. Okay, so now if we adjust this, they're now mirror images of each other. But one more detail, maybe we want to kind of set a particular range for each of these controls. Maybe we don't want the compressor gain to go up all the way to 50 dB. So let's set a minimum and maximum range. In this case, I'm gonna set this to maybe like negative 10. And for maximum, I'm gonna bring this way down. So maybe like plus five. And let's now adjust our compressor knob here. Beautiful, so now we've really customized this control and we can continue doing this for each one of the different controls and we can even adjust the look of the smart controls themselves. If you select here where it says general audio 10 and it'll say different things depending on the smart control, we can choose different looks for our smart controls. So let's select electronic drums 10. Cool. So we get different switches, different options. The B3, beautiful. We can also rename our different controls. So if we select on our compressor threshold, we can name this just threshold. And now we're all set. Or you can just set this to automatic smart controls and Logic will adapt the look and the controls of your smart controls for this channel strip, depending on what's on the channel strip itself. Again, let's just clear the deck here, just so we can see, delete all patch mappings, and then go back here and we can map all controls or all unmapped controls. Let's choose all controls, just so you can see how quickly you can just map things out and just get going. And if we close the inspector, we see these knobs disappear. Now, like I mentioned, the value I find with smart controls is when you're using MIDI controllers or surfaces or the iPad for controlling different elements of your instruments or mix. So let's choose something like our electric piano. And I wanna map some of these smart controls to the knobs on my complete controller. It's just as easy as mapping out different parameters. If we go down here, we have a section called external assignment. And we can see that we've got some things already assigned. I'm just gonna go ahead and click learn. Now I have my Native Instruments complete controller already hooked up to my Mac. So I just click on the control that I wanna map and start turning the knob on my controller. And you can see that I'm now turning the smart control. So if we turn off learn, we should now be able to adjust this control. Wonderful. And so we can continue doing the same down the line. And you don't have to turn learn off each and every time. You can just pick each different knob, choose the knob on your controller and map them. So let's do that right now. Cool, select the next one. Beautiful, the next. And there, now I can adjust these four different knobs. And if we take a look at Logic Remote on my iPad, you can see like we can play and we can also affect the instrument as well. So this is really so, so handy. That's so awesome. And really opens up the world of Logic for you to immediately get down to work and start controlling things. And Logic even supports a whole host of controllers that it will automatically map smart controls to. It's so awesome. And once you have something that you're happy with, you can just go to the library and save this as a patch. Or you can go into the channel strip and save this as a channel strip setting. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll see you tomorrow in this series.